Hi, um, so uh, this is a beetroot which I have just pulled out of the bed behind me and uh, this week I'm just going to make a film quite quickly without much editing or anything um, for various reasons. So some of you are interested in how to get started at growing veg and um, so that's what I'm going to do this week is make a little film about how to get started. It's going to not have any clowning in it, nothing fancy, not much editing, um, but mostly me talking. So um, <clears throat> here we go. All right, maybe it'll be a one take wonder. So this area behind me, it, it was just grass uh, a year ago. So uh, the first thing you need to do is find out or choose where you're going to grow your veg, where you're going to start. And I would suggest you start quite small in the first year, learn a few things and then increase the area as you go along. When I started, I had um, a double allotment and it got a little bit overwhelming. But once you get used to it, it's actually, it's not all that difficult. You can start with a big area. You can start with a huge area, but you probably need to get some advice from somebody and you might want to go and find somebody local who knows what they're doing, has done a little bit of it before and um, uh, I'm multitasking, I'm thinking and walking, it's very complicated. <laughs> so uh, yeah, maybe go to the local allotment, see if you can chat to somebody. Somebody might let you um, help out in exchange for, uh, you know, like a bit of produce when they have a glut. Because what you'll find is everything comes at once, you've got far too many beans, too many courgettes or whatever. So this is my little allotment. Um, unlike most how to grow videos, you'll see that it's a total mess. <laughs> I haven't tried to tidy it up to show off uh, how tidy it is. Uh, don't worry too much if it all gets overgrown and weedy because you can sort that out later in the year. But this video is about how to get started. And as I say, plants need to be in the right spot and you need to think about where they're going to go. So you're going to need uh, water, you need sunshine, uh, you're going to need nutrients from the soil and you're going to need uh, air, but air is not generally a problem. Um, something you do need to think about is um, how you're going to combat the weeds. You need to think about how you're going to combat the predators like slugs and snails and also um, <clears throat> well, a bunch of other things, which I'll try. If those of you who are interested in this video, just bear with me. Uh, the rest of you, I'm sure, have moved moved on already. So <laughs> I've chosen this uh, particularly uh, unattractive backdrop for a reason which will become clear uh, over time. <clears throat> right, so if you don't have very much space, you can grow vegetables in a container, something like this, yeah? You do need enough soil for the plant. So if you're growing something like a courgette, for example, um, a courgette needs a lot of nutrients, so you will need to give it a fairly, it's quite a big plant once it gets growing. You might just have a small amount of space, but you do want to have a think about the plants getting plenty of sunshine. They don't need to be in full sun all day long, but if they get plenty of light, they will do better. Depending on where you live, it's worth thinking about, um, like frosts are really important. So let's say you want to grow some peas, all right? All you've basically got to do is fill the pot up with compost or soil or some kind of growing medium, put the peas in, you get them from the garden center as seeds and put them in. Generally, seeds go about three times as deep as the size of the seed. So if you've got like a seed as big as a finger, then three fingers deep is where the seed goes. Uh, you put the peas in, cover them up with soil, water them, not let them dry out too much, and then they'll grow into pea plants. Um, if you're lucky, because what then happens is that you'll find the slugs and snails come along and they, and they eat them. So it's worth keeping them in a pot up above the ground, maybe on top of an old beer crate or something like that. If you've got lots of slugs and snails, oh, there's all sorts of ways you can have to deal with them. I once had 50 uh, pumpkin plants that grew from seed and I lost all of them to slugs and snails. Uh, since then I actually got ducks and that really makes a huge difference because they eat loads of the slugs and the, and, and the snails, but that's not always an option. Um, 
so I'm rambling on, but there's a lot of things to cover. I'll try not to cover the same thing more than once. And if you've got any questions, please do come back to me. Um, so you might want containers. Otherwise, you're gonna start off with something like this, yeah, a bit of grass, and it's got all sorts of things in it. What you'll find is if you don't put compost in your container and you put soil in the container, it will be the same as if you kill off this grass and then start using it as a flower bed, uh, sorry, a vegetable bed or a flower bed, in that it's got lots and lots of seeds in it and lots of weeds will come just from seeds. So, you know, maybe there's been a stinging nettle there in the past, maybe in the last 50 years, dropped a load of seeds in it and those seeds will still be ready when the conditions are right to turn into new little stinging nettle plants. That's fine but you have to stay on top of it a little bit. It does get a bit out of hand middle to late summer and then you need to properly weed it or mulch it. Mulching is covering the soil with a layer of uh, well you can do it with plastic, you can do it with wool, you can do it with straw, you do it with wood chip you do it with a new layer of soil and compost and growing medium. But basically, if you put something over the top, it retains the moisture and suppresses the weeds. But anything strong that keeps coming through, you might need to pull it out. So the nutrients in the soil, uh, are they get into the roots of the plant and help the plant to grow through a very, very complicated ecosystem in the soil. It's, it's the most complicated ecosystem that we know about. It's like, you know, in a handful of soil, you've got 50 million or even like a, a teaspoon full of soil. I think you've got 50 million or 50 billion. I don't know. It's a lot <laughs> of like tiny little organisms. And um, you've got a fungal uh, system called the mycorrhizal layer, which is, is all about how things are moving around within like all the nutrients that go into the plant and turn into your food and go into your body. They're all dependent on these processes. So one way of doing it is through a sort of inert growing medium, which might be a sort of very old, dried out sort of uh, soil, which is pretty much dead, but you add um, phosphorus and uh, potassium and nitrogen to it. Um, and they, that serves as a sort of artificial um, fertilizer or you know, plant food or whatever, and it grows that way. Or you try and work with the health of the soil. Uh, the type of soil you've got is really important. You you just got to try it out, you know, whether you're trying with potatoes or peas or beans or whatever you fancy, uh, you're going to find that your soil is going to behave in a certain way. Yeah, so it's got a certain amount of, um, it, it might be very heavy clay soil, it might be sandy soil which drains well but dries out. And all of them have uh, positive and negative aspects to them. The one thing you probably don't want is a contaminated soil. Uh, you know, if you're not sure, uh, I worked in a garden once uh, where it was near a road and they tested the soil and there was a lot of heavy metals in there from hundreds of years of like machinery going past and who knows what was kind of dumped there in the past. You know, sort of lead-based paints or something like that, you know. So if you're not sure and you want to eat a lot of the food that you're growing in your soil, it's worth getting it tested. Other than that, you can test it very cheaply for uh, its pH. So, you know, if it's quite acidic or quite alkaline, that's going to affect how you grow things. You can feed the soil if it's not a very uh, nutritious soil. It's always good to add a little bit of uh, food to it. There's all different ways of doing that, which uh, we can talk about in the future. But you'll probably find if you're growing from something like this, where it's grass, there's plenty like the beetroot I showed you earlier, uh, plenty of nutrients in there already. And the very first year is going to be particularly strong because you're unlocking a whole heap of nutrition and, um, and carbon by uh, killing off whatever's on top and growing vegetables in it. Right, so lots of different ways of uh, killing the grass. You could do it with chemicals, but I wouldn't advise it. Uh, people do do that. Uh, or you can use like a builder's plastic, which you can see in the background, or a specialised plastic, um, mypex it's often called. It's like um, a landscape uh, barrier and you can, you can put holes in that to plant through it. Uh, you can also use landscape fabric, which is that more flimsy one on the top, but, but if you walk on it or if it gets roughed up a bit, it just tears. You might want to do away with plastic altogether and just use cardboard. That's a really good way to go. So there's a cardboard box there, you can see. Um, 
and this so this cardboard here it's just a box you know if you put that down on the on the grass here then the grass isn't going to grow through it but what you'll find is that with the with the rain and the wind and everything is the cardboard just disintegrates and blows away so what you do is really you need to get a nice big bit of cardboard from say uh, the bicycle shop or outside the one, a furniture shop or something uh, maybe a, like an appliances shop and put it down on where you want to grow and then put a layer of compost or like uh, maybe manure or something like that on the top over the winter so this is a really good time of year to do that and it's going to kill off whatever's underneath. There might be some strong plants which come through in the spring, but you, they'll be very weak and you can dig them out more easily because the no dig system is really good for soil health. And if you want to know more about that, then I would very, very, very much recommend checking out Charles Dowding, uh, who is a sort of no dig expert. Um, it can be a bit overwhelming if you if you try and take it all on at once but really what you need to start with is think about where you're going to grow and start getting things ready and just pick up bits of advice here and there by all means um, you know find somebody local who can help out and give you some tips you know maybe go to the charity shop and find some books or go online or whatever there's lots and lots of resources out there and by all means message me if you want to um, so cardboard over grass we've done here before we've often actually used this this year we used paper it's called craft paper or imitation craft paper and it's a recycled paper but it actually if you use cardboard or recycled paper or anything that is a sort of a chemical legacy if you like which goes into the soil so it's not actually you wouldn't be allowed to do it if you were going to be certified organic um, because there's you know whatever has been recycled along with the paper like bits of ink and stuff is going to end up in the soil and in your food but seeing as we've all got something like 250 different artificial chemicals in our body anyway and we've got little micro particles of plastic in our rainwater and things like that you sort of you have to figure out what the best compromise is um, so what you do is you put your cardboard down you put your soil your sort of nutritious nutritious layer on top the worms will do the rest and it will turn into a, a really nice growing area for you then you need to maintain the edges uh, next year um, you could make a raised bed but that becomes a really nice habitat for slugs which is a bit of a pain so you could just use um, a hoe and a, a spade another video another time we'll probably have to look into the various tools that you will need um, so really without going on for more than 15 minutes I've got one minute left just to encourage you to choose a spot get it covered over and kill off the grass and everything that's there and it'll be ready for you in the spring. Either that or you can think ahead to where you're gonna have some containers and um, think about what you might have room for to grow. Uh, don't go crazy with like tons and tons and tons, just do a little bit. Maybe one courgette is enough. This year I was allowed one courgette plant because in the old days like maybe I had eight and you just end up with ridiculous numbers of courgettes. Uh, but you do have to get them past the first part of their life if you're growing from seed because the slugs just love the young tender plants. Once they get to a certain size, the slugs won't uh, be able to kill them off. Um, you could also, I mean, even if the slugs kill your seedlings, you could buy plants in pots. It's a bit more expensive, but you can get them and put them straight in the ground. And you'll find some things go well, some things don't go well give it a try, maybe team up with somebody else, maybe have a bit of fun and see who can grow the biggest radish or something like that. I hope this has been useful. I really encourage you to get going. Thanks for being patient with my long ramble and uh, maybe we can hook up sometime and uh, we can share a little bit more of our uh, vegetable growing stories. All right, thanks very much. Bye. Yeah, sorry, I just wanted to add something about cardboard is if it's got any sellotape on it, that will end up as plastic in the soil if you don't take it off first. Also with staples, which you sometimes get in cardboard, um, rather than putting seeds straight into the ground, 
get your seedlings started in pots or trays and you can get pots or trays from a skip at the back of your local garden center that's certainly what we do you can see here we've got paths uh, with plastic the mypex which is rolled out and pinned down um, eventually we'll take that plastic up and replace it with wood chip uh, what else did I want to say I'm sure there was something anyway message me if you've got any questions oh yeah it was if you do use plastic like a sheet of plastic or something to kill everything off over winter you'll need to weight it down with bits of wood and stones and things like that or something because otherwise the wind will come and blow it away all right so good luck getting everything ready bye hello again so a little bit to add um i forgot to mention that uh, craft paper we did it in three there were three sheets three layers of paper but it's not as good as cardboard and a lot of weeds grew through and we had to recover some of it so if you do go down the paper route you need to be aware of that um, this is an example uh, of an area which we've got covered um, we I've just raked it over I've just grown all these pumpkins off one seed so it was the only pumpkin seed I managed to keep alive and without being disrespectful it was a bit like being in the intensive care you know like having a tiny little baby little plant for weeks that was very touch and go whether it would make it anyway it made it and then it went in this soil here which had a load of old cow manure on it so had lots of nitrogen to feed off lots of sunshine plenty of water and uh, it has made about 20 pumpkins um, uh, the sort of weeds you have to deal with you can see you've got all sorts of things from dandelions to buttercups to nettles to brambles and you have those flowers there in the background and apple trees and all sorts but uh, you can cover it all over again if it gets too much kill off the weeds you know if we put a sheet of plastic over this or another big layer of mulch a lot of these plants wouldn't get through so I'm going to hoe them down dig out some of the bigger ones uh, mulch with um, the compost that I've got and uh, then any big ones that come through I can dig them out or pull them out uh, and they're much easier to pull out after it's rained a lot or you can soak the water if you go to my <laughs> my video called buttercup annihilation you can learn more about that and if you go to my video about uh, off-grid waste management you'll find out a little bit more about compost and what we've learned all right I hope that's helpful sorry about not getting my eye line right there's the camera there's me <laughs> there's you all right bye